Yes. All right. Good afternoon, friends and Professor Daryl. Uh, so today I want to deliver uh, my presentation about developing entrepreneurial competencies for primary care residents or trainees as a model for sustainable delivery of primary health care in Indonesia. So for the chapter one, uh, I will start from introduction. Uh, the first point is about the fourth industrial revolution information. So the fourth industrial revolution, or for IR, is the fourth major industrial era since the initial industrial revolution of the 18th century. And it is ca characterized by a fusion of technologies that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres, collectively referred to as cyber physical systems. It is marked by emerging technology breakthroughs in a number of fields, including robotics, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, quantum computing, biotechnology, the Internet of Things, the Industrial Internet of Things, or IIoT, fifth-generation wireless technologies, or 5G, additive manufacturing, or 3D printing and bully autonomous vehicles. So in the era of the fourth IR, or the fourth Industrial Revolution, medical doctors are also facing challenges in how to use the progress in information technologies or IT in real clinical settings. Patients and doctors are connected by technologies including patients and other health workers. More simplified medical services by using minimal invasive technologies have made primary care become interesting again in the future, especially in cutting the cost of national health insurance programs. This disruptive process is running fast and should be anticipated by primary care doctors. One of the best approaches in dealing with this issue is by working on healthcare technopreneurship. And the basic competency is getting started with medical entrepreneurship. So what is entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is a basic survival skill in modern era, in my opinion. Because entrepreneurship is the act of being entrepreneur or the owner or manager of a business enterprise who, by risk and initiative, attempts to make profits. The early 19th century French economist Jean Baptiste Sartre provided a broad definition of entrepreneurship, saying that it sieves economic resources out of an area of lower productivity and into an area of higher productivity and greater yield. And entrepreneurs create something new, something different, they change or transmute values. To be a good entrepreneur, someone should have the entrepreneurship spirit. The entrepreneurship spirit is not only about owning a business, but also integrating various kinds of innovations to be really implemented. Furthermore, regardless of the, regardless of the form size, big or small, they can partake in entrepreneurship opportunities. And the opportunity to become an entrepreneur requires four criteria. First, there must be opportunities or situations to recombine resources to generate profits. Second, entrepreneurship requires differences between people, such as preferential access to certain individuals or the ability to recognize information about opportunities. Third, taking on risk is necessary. Fourth, the entrepreneurial process requires the organization of people and resources. While entrepreneurship is often associated with new small and for-profit startups, entrepreneurial behavior can be seen in small, medium, and large-sized firms, new and established firms, and in for-profit and not-for-profit organizations, including voluntary sector groups, charitable organizations, and government. One of the concepts of this idea is social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship is used by startup companies and other entrepreneurs 
to develop, fund, and implement solutions to social, cultural, or environmental issues. This concept may be applied to a variety of organizations with different sizes, aims, and beliefs. For profit entrepreneurs, typically measure performance using business metrics like profit, revenues, and increases in stock prices. But social entrepreneurs are either non-profits or blank for profit goals with generating a positive return to society, and therefore must use different metrics. Social entrepreneurship typically attempts to further broad social, cultural, and environmental goals, often associated with the voluntary sector, in areas such as poverty alleviation, healthcare, and community development. At times, profit-making social enterprises may be established to support the social or cultural, cultural goals of the organization, but not as an end in itself. Now we talk about medical doctors as entrepreneurs. What about medical doctors, especially primary care doctors, as both social entrepreneurs and technopreneurs? As long as a doctor has innovation in their daily works, they have already had entrepreneurship spirit. In fact, medical doctors are hard workers, fast decision makers, risk takers, leaders, which have equipped them to be good entrepreneurs. Unfortunately, most medical doctors lack entrepreneurship training. Thus, entrepreneurship trainings which develop many kinds of primary care business models will be needed to fill the gap by stimulating primary care doctors to become entrepreneurs. Those trainings will stimulate primary doctors about the new ideas and how to make basic business plan. They will also get assignments that can be followed after the workshop. By following the assignments, they can be continuously encouraged to implement their business plan. By doing entrepreneurship projects, primary care doctors can get independent funding support from external sponsors who can be investors of the project. In fact, a social entrepreneurship project, such as primary care clinic establishment, can be a big project which can facilitate any other primary care doctor's activities. For example, research, pilot projects, teaching the juniors, and so on. If these primary care clinics are supported by advanced technology in the for industrial revolution era, then those primary care doctors also become technopreneurs. Advancement in biomarker screening that can be connected to electronic devices, for example, mobile phones, diagnosis by robotic algorithm based on artificial intelligence system, telemedicine, has made extensive progresses, yet opportunities for primary care doctors to develop preventive strategies. In addition, primary health care professionals are the people who most understand about the nature of the primary care itself. Thus, entrepreneurship is one of the most interesting and challenging programs for young doctors that should be supported by World Health Organization or WHO, World Organization of Family Doctors or one kind, government and the private sector. They have few mechanisms that bring the academic and business world together in a way that will maximize the success of health technology or health tech startups by increasing researchers' knowledge about how to operate in the business world. Current solutions offer a partial solution and include venture capital or VC panels in medical conferences. These VC panels educate academics on two important and interconnected issues, how to pitch their ideas in the business world and what to consider when creating a company. In sessions, Academia-based startup companies present their ideas before a VC panel composed of professional investors and receive feedback, of, feedback on their idea, business plan, and presentation techniques. Recent panel recommendations from Medicine 2.0 conferences fell into seven categories. First, the product, service, or idea you are developing into a company. Second, determine market forces and identify the target audience. Third, describe your competitive advantages. Fourth, the business plan. Fifth, the current and future resources and capabilities. Sixth, legal aspects. And seventh, general advice on the art of pitching. The academic and business literature validates many of these recommendations, suggesting that VC panels may be a viable and cost effective introduction to business and entrepreneurial education for physicians and other healthcare professionals. Panels benefit not only the presenting companies, 
with also the physicians, psychologists, and other healthcare professionals attending the session. Incorporating PhD panels into academic conferences might also eliminate the need for incorporating relevant business training within academia. Indonesia is beginning to establish new specialty in primary care medicine. It is called Family Physician Primary Care Specialty. Thus, this thesis will reveal about the insight of residents or trainees' capability in entrepreneurship as one of the basic competencies in this program. Thus, data will be collected in 17 medical vacancies in Indonesia, which have reached the highest rankings in their accreditation. Hopefully, this research can help curriculum development of this brand new medical specialty program in Indonesia. Justification of study. This research will explore development of competency clusters and training methodologies applicable to the primary care residence classroom. Learning center activities are suggested to develop these competencies in primary care residency students, but certain primary care physicians have had to learn on the job to be more entrepreneurial due to the pressures from multiple sources. Consider the academic primary healthcare director who must not only manage the business at hand but also be concerned about research funding, scientific inquiry and teaching. The primary healthcare industry has changed so much that administrators are encouraged to manage and lead their organization in a very different manner. No longer can they rely on traditional methods. Today's Primary care managers are required to think outside the box. Yet, entrepreneurship as a style of management and leadership has not been fully accepted by the traditional provider-based primary healthcare businesses. Responding to the growing need for increasing the entrepreneurial efficiencies of industry leaders, the others investigate training methods in the classroom setting that could facilitate this development. A call is made to integrate entrepreneurship into and across the primary care residency curriculum. We believe this can begin at the residency level. Research questions. This research will explore the development of competency clusters and training methodologies applicable to the primary care residency classroom. First, the call for more entrepreneurial behavior from primary healthcare doctors is identified. Second, definitions and examples of entrepreneurial traits and tendencies are reviewed in both professional and academic literature sources. Third, Competency clusters are identified. Chapter 2 The Literature Review. We want to discuss first about the competency clusters. The first task in facilitating professional development in the classroom is to formulate an operational definition for entrepreneurial skills. The term entrepreneur brings up a broad spectrum of images, so this problem becomes challenged. Furthermore, many of the key behaviors observed in company founders are now being called for in organizational employees, sometimes referred to as an intrapreneurship. Definitions for entrepreneurs often mention a variety of these critical skills or competency clusters. In the healthcare setting, Gary Lamp, SDR, and FAIM, Senior Corporate Director for Community Services for the Current Health Network based in Tucson, Arizona. Suggest a cluster consisting of the recognition and response to opportunities by defining a nurse entrepreneur as someone who identifies a patient need and envisions how nursing can respond to that need in an effective way and then formulate and executes a plan to meet that need. It's looking for opportunities and really seizing the moment. In order for the investigators to select competency clusters for study, a specific entrepreneurial literature search was conducted. And now we are discussing about the characteristic associated with entrepreneurial behavior. A literature review determined the characteristics associated with entrepreneurial behavior. Business and social science references as well as sources which revert directly to healthcare were selected. This review provided a way to identify the eight competencies decision making, strategic thinking, risk taking, confidence building, commu communicating ideas, motivating team members, tolerance of ambiguity, and internal locus of control. Lauer suggests that healthcare managers should take on a more entrepreneurial attitude when making decisions. Strategic thinking is also a competency that appears frequently in the literature on entrepreneurship. Clinicians are advised to develop 
an entrepreneurial mindset focused on strategy development. Risk assessment is a common aspect of strategy planning. Risk taking is a key characteristic of the entrepreneur. A recent study showed that entrepreneurs are less risk adverse than employees. Yet at times, researchers use the word entrepreneur in a pejorative manner to identify managers who take risk irresponsibly. A call has gone out to healthcare organizations to become more innovative in creating new market opportunities. Ray showed in an international study that entrepreneurs are distinguished from managers in their ability to give up job security because they have confidence that they will succeed. Businesses which have entrepreneurs leading them can acquire benefits as demonstrated in one study where entrepreneurs with high self-assurance led their companies to a faster rate of growth. Entrepreneurs must communicate their ideas to garner support. They use persuasion or accommodation to build support for the ideas. Communication of ideas and concepts is considered critical for the entrepreneurial nurse, according to one nurse executive. When sponsoring an entrepreneur day at Reinhardt School of Business, communicating ideas was one of the major attributes said to be necessary to operate a business. Motivating team members is another behavior associated with entrepreneurs. Flick Stein describes entrepreneurs as having the ability to motivate cooperation of others by providing them with common meanings and identities. A strong team-based culture will produce success for the entrepreneur's company. Entrepreneurs thrive in turbulent, uncertain environments. No one can deny that the healthcare industry fits this description. Entrepreneurs are observed to have high tolerance for ambiguity. They thrive on ambiguity revering a vast rather than a specific situation and see ambiguity as an opportunity. Brockhouse also noted that entrepreneurs had a greater sense of internal locus of control than the general population. Gasse also noted the importance of an internal locus of control for entrepreneurs and reported it to be more significant than achievement needs. After reviewing literature on entrepreneurship in healthcare and other industries, and factoring in our own field experience, Eight competency clusters were identified. Decision making, strategy thinking, risk taking, confidence building, communicating ideas, motivating team members, tolerance of ambiguity, and internal locus of control. Now we're discussing about learning centered activities. A new learning paradigm has emerged which places this, the responsibility on higher education for true student learning. Instructors in their device set of learning activities that together include opportunities for students to acquire information and ideas, engage in a doing or observing experience, and reflect on the learning process as well as the subject matter. Below, we provide a framework to suggest the exercises that can be used to stimulate entrepreneurial behavior. The pedagogy suggested they can be used in a variety of undergraduate administration courses. Some examples could be a management processes class, a leadership class, or a class on marketing and strategic planning. Chapter 3, now we're talking about the methodology. The study objectives. The general objectives of this research will explore the development of hypothesis clusters and training methodologies applicable to the primary care residency classroom. And the, spec and the specific objectives are, first, the call for more entrepreneurial behavior from primary health conductors is identified, second, definitions and examples of entrepreneurial traits and tendencies are reviewed in both professional and academic literature sources, third, competency clusters are identified. And this is the conceptual framework, so the primary care residence of the trainees so I want to uh, make research about the social demographic factors, about the sex, age, education level, and experience of the primary care residents, and also their attitude in related factors, such as opinion about entrepreneurship, willingness to be entrepreneur, and their communication with the patients. And also I want to review about the practice related factors, and then I correlate all of them with the entrepreneurial competencies in primary care practice. What about the study design? This is a descriptive cross-section study based on question and answers by primary care residents in Indonesia. Currently, this is planned to be in 17 medical faculties in Indonesia which has reached highest levels of accreditation. However, only one medical faculty has established the program. 
It is the medical faculty of Pajajaran University in Bandung, West Java. And this study will utilize the descriptive survey method with the use of both open and close-ended questionnaire as the main instrument of data collection. Students questionnaire. The students questionnaire is used as an opportunity for students to reflect on the entrepreneurial skill level. We can see at the table one, the table one presents each of the eight competencies and their corresponding item number of the survey. They are decision making, strategic thinking and risk taking, confidence building, communicating ideas, motivating team members, tolerance of ambiguity, internal locus of control. And each of them covers uh, many numbers of the questionnaires we can see at the table one. And I also use some abbreviations. I'm glad you can see it. It's a bit small. <laughs> In the revision, you make it larger yeah. text. Okay. okay. And the table two indicates the question stem text, the survey item member, number, the item's corresponding scale, and theorize possible interaction with other scales. Questions were derived from definition and in samples of entrepreneurship in the literature. And now is the table two. We can see the question stem from number one until number 19. And then at the right side, they are the eight competencies that are needed to be good entrepreneurs. So uh, the, the respondents will be asked if they are confident in their ability to communicate their ideas and concepts to others. And then uh, they also have to answer about their insights about uh, the most important decisions are based on insufficient information or not. And what about their tough time making decisions and when there's, there is something is not right whether they are likely to be one of the first to jump in or, and try to change it or not, and whether it is fun for them to tackle a complicated problem than a simple one, and whether uh, they feel that they have little influence of the direction of their own life, or whether they are also in control of their own destiny, and whether they are very strong on strategic planning, whether they are used to compare with what is unfamiliar, whether they are well-organized people, whether they can do approach to all challenges, whether they are not very diplomatic when it comes to sticky situations, whether they are very good at identifying opportunities, whether they are, have an easy time getting to know new people, whether they will likely that they will own their own business one day, whether they, whether they are a good team player, whether they have inside that success is mostly dependent on hard work and ability, whether they are really do take risks, whether they are confident in their abilities to motivate and inspire others. And the table three is also the questionnaire. So, uh, I also want to make classroom techniques, so I want to make uh, such kind of uh, entrepreneurship trainings, which consists of lectures and reading assignments, cases, reflection papers, group assignments, role plays, and simulations. And I've made the modules, and I will try it um, in Malaysia in this March, and also uh, in Kyoto in May. So, uh, in this questionnaire, we can see that, for example, lectures. Lectures uh, covers the competencies of decision making, strategic thinking, blah, 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 based on the X sign. And what about the entrepreneurial competency questionnaire? So, we can see this uh, questionnaire. In the space before each statement, please write the number that represents uh, your level, I mean their level, of agreement or disagreement with each statement. So I made a rating scale from strongly disagree to strongly agree, from 
number set number one to number seven. So the first one, whether they are confident in their ability to communicate ideas and concept to others, whether they think that the most important decisions are based on insufficient information, blah blah blah, just just uh, the same that I've read before. And I also use the question I use in the classroom, in the table three. So this instrument, I mean the question I use in the classroom with the modules in the training, was designed for purposes of reflection towards skill development and not evaluation for a grade or promotion. It is to administer make copies without the title, the title being sure to include the instructions. Give to students early in the coursework after they take the survey, have each student's self score. Since each student will rate her, herself or himself differently, there is a little value in students comparing scores. Rather, the teacher encourages reflection and then leads discussion on the items. After several weeks of the coursework, the teacher will administer the test again and see if the scores have changed. They will then hold a class discussion on how much and why scores might have changed. What does a potential seat in entrepreneurial competency position potentially mean for the students in their work and for the industry? And what about the scoring? In order to score the questionnaire, refer scores are assigned on item 3, 6, 8, 9, uh, etc. Such as, such that 1 equals 7, 2 equals 6, etc. Add up the total, the greater the score, the higher one's self-perception of his or her entrepreneurial competencies is indicated. And the uh, details of the classroom techniques. I would suggest a three-step process to entrepreneurial training in primary care residency classroom. First, I will introduce the importance of the entrepreneurial training. Second, demonstrate skills and importance. And third, provide opportunities for, for practice. An example method would be to place students into groups of three to seven members and ask them to form fictitious health organizations. Some examples created in past classroom experience have been a hospital, a government authority, an HMO, a medical device company, a pharmaceutical research company, and a healthcare advocacy group. Throughout the course, learning center activities engage the student groups in building the organization. The respective organizations have name, style, and given a mission, vision, and value statement. Creative teaching methods are used to have each group complete team assignments that emphasize this management processes, for example, planning, organizing, communicating, controlling, or other subject matter being studied in the course. In addition to group assignments, lectures, experiential exercises, such as role plays, and simulation games, case studies, and reflection papers are the primary classroom techniques used. Class sessions present information, case examples, and discussion on a, on a particular topic associated with entrepreneurial competency. See at table 3. And some examples of specific activities that are planned to be conducted include writing job description, creating organizational tasks, reassessing the mission statement, completing a SWOT analysis, developing a strategic position and smart goals, assessing many legal matters, labor relations, etc., and decision making, addressing the current business challenges in the industry. In addition, activities were selected which has the group in interacting with each other, for example, interchanging of staff, forming virtual engage, and win-win negotiating. And also, also used the teacher's journal as a qualitative method of tracking classroom reactions to teaching methods. It is suggested that these instructors take the time immediately following each class session to reflect, up, to reflect upon that day's instruction. The teacher should know that what subject matter the students are picking up on quickly and what sparks interest. The teacher should also reflect on opportunities for improvement in the design and presentation of future lectures or exercises. Teams from the journal notes can be divided into the volume four categories. Demonstration of entrepreneurial behavior, reactions to assignments, opportunities for improvement, and general reflections. Demonstrations of entrepreneurial behavior can be in the form of comments and actions. Comments made during class discussions such as ideas about owning a business, creating a business, and identifying business development opportunities should be listed. 
Actions by students started stacking charts, communicating vision, leadership, and stepping outside of one's comfort zone should be logged as entrepreneurial demonstrations. The second category, reactions to assignments, include two sub-teams, energizing, energizing and resistance, reflection on when the energy of the group seems to live during group assignments, simulation role plays, and all that during the guest lecture can be assessed. Resistance will most likely be experienced when ambiguity enters the system and students are confused as to what to do next. This will happen from time to time in role plays and particularly during simulation exercises, which have ambiguity built into the game. The third team, opportunities for improvement, could occur on multiple fronts. Based on the skill profile and goals of the student makes, additional competencies could be added or exchanged to the array in the table one. For example, Developing finance, marketing, and selling proficiencies could further support entrepreneurial behavior. Other opportunities for enhancements would include clarifying the learning obje objectives of any activity or exercise to increase by in. Suggestion from the students on timing and order of reading assignments and exercises could also be locked. Keep your senses observant as to what works and what doesn't work in the classroom and take note for future reference. The fourth category, general reflections, is comprised of the professor's sense of effectiveness of that day's class session. For example, notes on how classes went and the cognitive and emotional responses. The junior notes are a way for the professor to assess the qualitative impressions or the effectiveness and opportunities for improvement of any given exercise. It was therefore deemed important to be able to track observation of events that occur in class and the response afterwards. In so doing, other potential variables for study are able to emerge. For example, an eye for business development opportunities could have been demonstrated by the several spontaneous conversations that transpire on the topic. The, cautioning, the, cautional, the cautionary note. The dynamic mix between private entrepreneurship and government actions forms the complex framework of American healthcare. Entrepreneurial development in healthcare professionals being looked at as a way for the industry's full workforce to leverage this complexity. Profit making motives oftentimes conflict with policies set by public policy, thereby stiffly creative plans. What about the target population and sample population? The sample population of this research would consist of the following persons who joined primary care residency program in Indonesia. And the study period will be from late 2019 until late 2020. Then the estimated sample size for interviews total of all medical faculties, the 20 residents per faculty times 17 medical faculties will be 340 primary care residents or trainees. Inclusion criteria, all the primary care residents in Indonesia during the term of this study. Exclusion criteria, persons who do not consent to participate. And the sampling technique will be proposed sampling technique. Data, collecting, data collection tools will be done by structures and semi-structures questionnaire containing closed-ended questions according to objectives and variables of the study will be used for collection of data. In data management and analysis plan, the collected data will be cleaned, separated, and then will be entered into the computer program as space as will be used for the data analysis. The principal investigator will be responsible for data entry. Data will be tested for association among some variables. For the data will be analyzed to test statistical significance using Chaskos test to find out association between study variables on the basis of the study findings. And what about the quality control and quality assurance? And as the researcher, I will collect all the data and will analyze them. Quality will be assured by the following steps. Question pretest, careful selection of interview subjects, cleaning of the data, rechecking of the data collected, editing of the data. Ethical considerations. All necessary administrative approvals will be obtained from the most possible authorities before the study takes place, including IUS and IRBs, and authorities as appropriate in Indonesia. Verbal consent will be taken from the participants of the study. The respondents will be assured of the confidentiality. Expected outcomes. This research will explore development of competency clusters and training methodologies applicable to the primary care residency platform. The study aims at number one, interest in entrepreneurial behavior among primary health care doctors. Definition and examples of entrepreneurial traits and tendencies will be reviewed in both professional and academic literature sources. 
competency cluster will be intensified. It is suspected the information collected in 70 medical faculties in Indonesia, which has reached highest rank of accreditation, can help curriculum development of the brand new medical specialty program in primary care. Cooperations with other selected institutions will be made to examine the challenges and opportunities that exist. Limitations. The study will only focus on a limited number of medical faculties, 17 of 80 medical faculties in Indonesia, because it must be highest rank accredited medical faculty which can establish primary care residency program. And the chapter 4, 5, and 6 uh, have not been finished, uh, but the chapter 4 will be made as uh, will be made to discuss about call for more entrepreneurial behavior from primary health conductors is identified. In chapter five we'll discuss about definition and examples of entrepreneurial traits and tendencies are reviewed in both professional and academic literature sources. In chapter six will be the competency clusters and chapter seven will be about discussion, chapter eight about conclusion and recommendations and the end will be the references. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Arthur. Good. So, uh, now you mentioned that you're going to also try the survey in Malaysia when you go there? Mm, I think so. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking about it. Um, mm. uh, actually, I will just make it in Indonesia. But if I find that the samples is quite good, I mean the amount of samples quite, will be quite good, I think I also include the Malaysian samples. Okay. But I, I think that I'm lack of time because I've just given one day <laughs> yeah. to give the, the session. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that's good. And then um, I'd like to ask on Skype if anybody has any questions before my battery runs out. But, but actually, I plan to, uh, to do more serious training after the Malaysia event and the Kyoto event. So maybe the Malaysia event and the Kyoto event will be just a uh, trigger for the young doctors to enter the more serious training that I will do in the next future. Right. Yeah. So I plan to make a foundation to train uh, primary health care uh, providers. And I cooperate, or I will cooperate with the government. So, yeah. are, are there uh, entrepreneurial programs in Malaysia at the moment? You said there's one in Indonesia. What about in ASEAN and other countries? Um, the the most sophisticated entrepreneurial program for medical doctors nowadays uh, is in England mm. by the medical a uh, British Medical Association. And actually, I copy some of the uh, ideas, and uh, I mean, of course, I have to make some modification because uh, maybe Asian culture will be different. But I think that the Asian culture is very entrepreneurial. Mm. So <laughs> we can see that many entrepreneurs uh, are coming from Asians. Mm. So uh, and uh, in in fact that. Uh, young doctors, especially young doctors, of course they have a great spirit, they are still very young and they are in training, especially in primary care training. So uh, I think that the future will be the primary health care in the medicine. Why? Because I, uh, we can see that the minimal invasive treatment, minimal invasive surgeries and all the other healthcare professionals can also do that kind of things. For example, nurses in many countries have already done the endoscopy procedures. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I think that uh, for the future, uh, the primary healthcare, even nurses, are uh, having the most prominent uh, role in the healthcare itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, especially. There are, there are also a lot of advancement in technologies mm. and uh, artificial intelligence, etc. So I think it's really related to primary healthcare because it is more direct, it is more uh, disruptive. Mm. I mean that maybe for the f in the future, in the next future, 
patients will not come to the hosp big hospitals. Maybe they just come to the clinics, the primary healthcare clinics. Even the primary healthcare will provide uh, healthcare in the patient's home, mm -hmm. based on the technologies, based on uh, yeah uh, medical devices that can be connected with the patient body. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that will be the future. That's why I want to train them in entrepreneurship because mm -hmm. uh, they are the uh, the most uh, important stakeholder in, in this matter. Yeah. For a few, just a couple of positive comments. People thought it's very well interesting and well written, so it's good. Well, I just want to, they, maybe for the next time, I will, I mean, in, in, in the term of my research, I will develop uh, the methods. Maybe I will combine many kind of methods. Well, I think after the literature review, you can develop a questionnaire more mm -hmm. and also do some case studies mm -hmm. of the programs because there's also large MBA programs in the United States mm -hmm. and uh, attached to medical schools. Mm -hmm. And we have an MBA program, that was the idea. Yeah, yeah, MB so, MBA. Yeah. So the MBA program is a, is a far, you know, linked to this entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So I believe that um, primary healthcare is one of the most important factors if we want a sustainable medical service. Mm. Right. Yeah, because the primary care, uh, the primary care providers or and facilities are located on the community. I mean, they 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 involved in the community, mm. so they are the front line. They are the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. So, uh, by strengthening the primary care, we will cut a lot of medical costs, healthcare costs. Yeah. So I, I think that the primary healthcare businesses will be disrupted. Will will disrupt <laughs> conventional uh, healthcare business. Yeah, I believe it. Other questions or comments? Any comments or questions on Skype? So, what's the difference between primary health care clinics and public health care clinics? Yeah, this is very interesting. Uh, actually, uh, in Indonesia, we just have the primary care clinics. For example, the primary uh, health care for community, community health centers that are owned by the government. And we also have uh, private clinics, and all of them are primary care clinics. So we don't have any public health facilities actually. Right. Uh, maybe the public health facilities in Indonesia is done by the local government office. Right. Right. But there is no specific facilities to to uh, to do that kind of thing. But uh, I want to tell you something. Uh, at the first time, the community health centers in Indonesia are made to prevent and promote, uh, I mean, uh, to edu educate people in preventing diseases. But because of, um, in 1970s and uh, until 1980s, we were lacking of doctors, mm -hmm. so the community health centers also cover uh, curative aspects, mm -hmm. and it become worse on our days because some of the community health work, community health centers uh, has become small hospitals, mm -hmm. so there is no <coughs> facilities. In Indonesia, uh, which focus on really focus on the preventive treatment, mm -hmm. uh, that's the government established a brand new program, mm -hmm. uh, the primary care specialty. So we maybe in other countries we call it as uh, family physicians. Mm -hmm. So the general practitioners should take three more years training. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the government will rely on them to 
lead the primary care facilities uh, around Indonesia. Mm. Uh, so that's, I think that the most important competencies is entrepreneurship competencies because I've managed three clinics now in my medical faculties and I can see that um, even myself, I think that myself and many young doctors um, also maybe senior doctors, we are lacking of uh, entrepreneurship competency. Mm. Uh, I guess uh, if it's a government community healthcare centre, doesn't need it does it, if its funding is secure from the government, it doesn't need to be very entrepreneurial. It can be just a standard. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But it may not be very efficient. That's what you say. Yeah, yeah. This I want to focus on the private. Yeah. Aspect. So I want to make a model of the private sectors, and I want to make a, a collaboration with the public sector. I mean the government sectors. So, but I think that uh, most of the community health centers that are owned by the government, they are also lacking um, funding and money because uh, they are they 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 become center of expense mm. because they cannot handle the money efficiently. And yeah. is there a, a, any prohibition on the government public health centre mm -hmm. getting some fees for some services? Uh, they can get fees also. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and now, uh, based on the National Health Insurance Scheme, uh, the patients should uh, give some money also. Also, there is a co-payment mm. yeah, to ensure that they Serious. They do, yeah, they, so to ensure that they don't come to the health facilities uh, oftenly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Manuel, do you want to speak? Try again. Manuel. Manuel, try again now. We might, I can't hear you, Manuel. I think he had a question. Okay, well, I think it's uh, yeah, very interesting mm. to, in the extension studies, in a sense, of how to merge public and private to effective public health mm. and primary health care. So we wish you good luck. But I think Thank you. the modification may be the, at the international aspect and then we'll think a little bit on also the, some of the other background work that you've done. Yeah. That can include that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good job. Uh, international Labour Organization module. So it's also being used by the UNSCR to train uh, basic entrepreneurship uh, skills for the refugees and etc. And I combine it with the B British Medical Association training module. So uh, actually this is a pilot project and I think that uh, I will uh, improve these modules continuously and I think this is, will be a long lifetime project mm. <laughs> because I want to know about the results. But <laughs> <laughs> Of course, I cannot use this as my thesis because it will be a long time to, to wait the results. So I just want to get some um, simple aspects of uh, this training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, would you like to explain more detail about uh, your uh, third objective? Ah, research objective. Because I can't get Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, uh, Actually, I will do a literature review, and I've got it actually. So there are ex there, there are eight basic competencies of an entrepreneur. So uh, I want to identify whether the trainees, I mean the primary care trainees, the primary care residents, uh, whether they have those competencies. Yeah, based on their self-insight, 
So uh, they will fill uh, so questionnaire. Assessment. Yeah, self-assessment. So the, I think that this is the most basic uh, and very simple uh, research. Just I will develop it uh, in some of this research. Yeah, maybe uh, other friends also can give me inputs how to make or to sharpen the methodologies. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Uh, you pick on my experience in the premier uh, competence in primary care practice. Ah, yeah. What so, kind, so what kind of character uh, do you would like to use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. What kind of analyze? Yeah, so uh, I just start from the very basic competencies. This is the basics, the, the eight competencies are the basic competencies for all entrepreneurs, whether you are medical doctors or not. So maybe in the future, I will also get other competencies. And I have mentioned it in this thesis, is this proposal. So uh, maybe uh, I can find something new. Uh, this. I will uh, revise the questionnaire and I also uh, try to, maybe I will try to make a, uh, make a more complicated methodology to, to get the real competencies that are needed. Maybe uh, the teachers, I mean the uh, trainers of this primary care residents and also the professors and also other colleges can give input what any other kind of competencies they are needed to be a good uh, primary care entrepreneur. So I've actually I've uh, made that methodologies to uh, that methodology to support this idea, but I have not uh, included in this uh, proposal yet uh, because I want to. Uh, improve it more better. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, I have to indicate uh, enterprise competence. Sorry? A scale of, uh, I have to indicate a uh, scale of uh, at, what is it? In table 2, uh, at, the scale. At, uh, a scale of uh, enterprise scale. Scale. You mean that? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what kind of a scale table two. The scale? What in table two? Yeah. What scale? Ah, table two. Oh yeah. Let's okay. see okay. okay. scale of competencies. <laughs> yeah, uh, the scale of yeah is is it about the confidence about the level of uh, the uh, competencies in entrepreneurship. So it's just a self-assessment about the insights about the uh, entrepreneurship uh, competencies. Yeah, they, so they can uh, give judgment about their own uh, competencies. So I think, uh, of course, this is this will make bias, but uh, this is uh, the basic uh, uh, the basic survey. I mean, the basic research to make another. Uh, improvement in this research. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe you have to analyze factor uh, analysis mm -hmm. because table two is a uh, scale of uh, uh, competence and uh, enterprise competence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and table two is a scale of uh, enterprise competence mm -hmm. and. Uh, Maybe this is necessary to analyze. Okay, 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 right, right. Thank you. And uh, uh, what do you mean? D-M-S-T-I-P-G-B? Hmm? C-I-M-T-G-B? What do you mean by S-T-C-B? Ah, the, those are abbreviations. I have uh, mentioned it before. So DM is the abbreviation of the decision making. Yeah. Yeah. And she's asking how you, you are going to scale it. What do you mean? Uh, DM. 
Yeah. yeah. So uh, the the explanation about that uh, has been included in my literature review. So what is decision making? What is strategic thinking? What is risk taking? All of them have been uh, explained before. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then she's asking also about the, the scaling. So, oh. for example, in DM, how would how will you count until how how you would would you say if it's thirty eight and what does it mean by thirty eight or forty? The numbers. The numbers. What's this number? Yeah, maybe you can go down uh, return uh, return the term meaning mm -hmm. of DM and then uh, return mm -hmm. over time. But it's quoting here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, and possibly in the, so in the revised version, you can include the full names of these terms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. In the table would be right, right. easier. Okay. 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 Again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other comments? Anyone? Good. Well, thank you very much. Uh, well done, Irvin. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Professor. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Yeah. Okay.